life. But what does life give us at return? I'm Esso Angare from the sky blue St. Angela Kemenikas, ready to propose the motion that states that the life expectancy is determined by the economic state of a country. What is life expectancy? That's the first question, as you, my audience, should ask yourself. Do you know? Let me just answer for you. It's the average period one has to live. So, it's a period that each one of us has. We don't know the period that we have in life. So, what is economic state? The average period that may is the increase in amount of goods and services that not only that we may have in life, but also may help us continue with our life skills. So, with my first point is, rich countries have financial health facilities that enables now this life expectancy to occur frequently. Uh, let me give a very good example like China. They are very rich. They have all the health facilitations that they require. And according to researchers of the standard dog, okay, give a, a, the factor that is giving me the point that China has the most suitable facilitation for all life expectancy is only they have the largest mostly. And as you see in most countries, they have the less. That is China, in like India. Let me give a very good example, like India. They have the most population, but is their rate increasing or getting low? Mostly it's getting low. Because they lack the best health facilitation that they require for this life expectancy to get. My second point is stable economic state leads to the life expectancy. I'll give a very good example. According to the Imperial News, in 2022 to 2023, in Kenya, our doctors and nurses demonstrated. Sure. Some of you want to be doctors. I want to be a doctor. And mostly, we are not able to. Most of those patients who are in ICU die. And 60% of those patients in ICU die. Sure. Doctors to be in future. Nurses. Do your work. As I rest my case, I will listen. Birds of a feather flock together. So flock with me. And fly with me as we go to propose the motion that says that life expectancy is determined by the economic state of a country. I rest my case. Thank you. Hey! 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 I am, I am shocked. I am perplexed. I am whatever adjective I can use here. I can't believe it. It appears that Kiriaidi girls are intellectual, of course, but it appears today that, let's give a benefit of doubt, they are under the weather today. They are trying to tell us. They are trying to tell us. They are trying to tell us that economy is affected, life expectancy sorry, is affected by economy. Well, let me give you the facts. According to WHO, that is World Health Organization, law like Cuba, Costa Rica, they have high expectancy, yet they have low economic economy. Also, a country like Russia, United States, they have high economy, but low expectancy. Is it a coincidence? I don't think so. I am Rafael Gitari, a shocked man, by the way, here, here to firmly oppose the motion that states life expectancy is determined by the economic state of a country. So, first of all, first of all, I will start by defining the term for you so that you may understand. She may want you to flock with her, but I want you first to get me before we walk together. 
So, life expectancy is refers to the average number of years that a person can expect to live. Uh, typically, typically, sorry, based on current mortality rates. That's according to WHO, World Health Organization. Economy, it refers to a system of for deciding how scarce resources are used so that goods and services are, can be produced and consumed. That's according to Reserve Bank of Australia. To determine, simply to come to a conclusion according to MeriamWebster.com. Now, you see, life expectancy, it is not as, as a problem that we can look at it in a unidirectional point of view. We must see that it has many factors that contribute to life expectancy. Let, preferably, let's use a Rubik's Cube. We all know a Rubik's Cube, six faces, which each face comprises of six different colors. Now, I want us to consider a Rubik's Cube to be life expectancy. Now, simply because economy, state of a country, cannot be the only reason that, de that determines life expectancy. I'll give you another factor, gender inequality. You see, gender inequality, according to Global Gender Gap Report 2020, it states that gaps, gender gaps in health outcomes, with women facing great, greater barriers to access health care and experiencing higher rates of maternal mortality. You see, in poverty-stricken areas, such as Tukana and Wajia, these places, women cannot access the the quality services of healthcare that they require. You see, long ago, women used to be undermined. But now, one time, somebody came with the ideology of feminism, which picked up the girl child and raised her above the food chain. That shows that if, in these places, they cannot access healthcare, how do you expect them to give birth? If they give birth, it, it, most of them will lead to maternal deaths, which will lower life expectancy. I don't know if you want this to be your fate, but certainly I don't want my wife to be a victim. <laughs> Concluding, I will say once again, do you want to be the victim? I doubt. Good evening, good afternoon, sorry, good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Gakunga, a grown flower from the beautiful and great garden of many girls. Long live the clan, long live the clan. May the people live long. My first point here is about health. I have a question to ask you. Without the economics, without knowing or without a good economic state of that country, can you have a good can you have a good health care? Can you get good health care in an area where you don't have good economic growth or state? I highly doubt that. Because of one key factor, you need the money, you need the revenue to buy those machines. The one that you're saying you don't you want your wife to use, your future wife to use, yeah, you need money for that. So that's why I'm stating that for the development of or for the increase in life expectancy, we obviously need better health facilities, which can only come for one factor. The, a better economic state of the country. My second point is this will lead to increase in job opportunities. What does that mean? An increase in job opportunities means that more of the youth that come out of universities will have a better place to be, will be able to go and work. Do you know how that increases life expectancy? Stress. Right now, a lot of people are stressing over, oh, where am I going to get my money from? Where am I going to get my daily bread? How am I going to provide for my children? That, that increases stress level. And you know stress levels when they are high, they're not healthy. They're not healthy at all. So that means for you to feel relaxed, happy, safe, and you know, you know, just safe, simple. 
you need to increase the economic state of that country. And my final point, the living standards. Obviously, with an increase in job opportunities, there's an increase in the living standards of the people. And with remembering a fact, I really thank you for that book to give us on health, because you are supporting us here. Obviously, for, a, for you to start a hospital, you need money. For you to have those incubators, the theaters, the theaters like sweep and hire the doctors. Don't you need money? Thank you. <laughs> you need money. So, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for my opponents for agreeing with me. And I hope that right now, this bad death, bad death, bad death will finally be reduced. Because since I'm not the creator, I cannot choose who lives or dies. I can only say, through the increase in economic growth, shall we have a better, shall we increase the life expectancy. Thank you. Second proposal. Lies, lies, lies. Eyes but lies. To be specific, eyes but lies. Well, how come and tell us that the economy is going to determine the life expectancy? Now, guys, let's be specific. Here, each and every guy here wants to be, wants to have a wife. We all want to have a child. But yet again, they are telling us that the economy is go, the economy is determining the life expectancy of our country. Our country is degrading. Do you want to tell me I won't have my wife? Possibly from here in the but the way I'm seeing, I won't have one from there because I've, I've died from that child. I am Bodezon from Danieri High School. Here to firmly oppose the motion that states life expectancy is determined by economic, the economic state of a country. As you say, take the Rubik's Cube as the life cube, representing the life expectancy. Now, how else? Let's touch social safety net and social protection programs. This is simply how we can access quality health services available at any time, at any place in, in, in every country. Now, the safety, the social safety net will, is what determines, it's one of the factors that determines the life expectancy. Take a, a, a good example, my grand, grandmother. She wants quality health care through programs such as NHIF, the National Health Insurance Fund. Let's not be local, let's go to Namibia. Namibia has the Namibia Old Age Pension and Malawi has the social cash transfer program that helps the old age people, also the children, to, to get, uh, showing us that it's, it's a, this is a factor that determines life expectancy. Now, this is achieving the color green. Social living and cohesion. Picture this. If I come here and give each and every person here a SESCA and six bullets, I repeat, six bullets, and I say, every man for himself, will we increase our life expectancy or we, we are going to decrease it? Inevitably, we are going to decrease it. This is social living and cohesion. If we won't have social living and cohesion, the togetherness that I live as a brother, I live as a brother with you, you live as a sister with another one, I live as a sister and a brother to you, we are going to increase the life expectancy. Take, for example, South Sudan. They have us. Are you going to tell me that economy is going to increase the life expectancy of that country? This is according to the research by Harvard T.H. Chan School of the Public Health. More so, a report by the International Labour Organization. Political stability and governance. We know of the case of Ukraine, where Putin was supposed to shoot the shots. Our leaders, if they determine how we live, if they, they determine the well-being of that country he leads, we are going to increase our life expectancy. This is achieving SD number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, according to the www.worldbank.org. This is achieving the color orange of the Robis Cube, which I say it is life expectancy. Now, guys, will you be 
lied to that we won't have our wives, we won't have a, a child that I'll see come to debate here in this same same podium 20 years from now. Will you? My question is the proposers, and my question is doctors and nurses are professionals. And in their professional character, do we expect them to leave their places of work and come for demonstrations without having a payment? One of you have just said that your grandmother wants to live a quality life. Do you think that something will just move from heaven and hit her? <laughs> so that she needs, she needs the doctors. Doctors can't do anything. That's why the invention of machines. And these machines use money. So I'm not understanding. Help me understand, thank you. Not yet to engage like her, but I have a question. Our economy is at fall, and so do you have the stats that our life expectancy is reducing? Last time I checked, India's life expectancy with medical uh, you live India's life expectancy with medical facilities. Um, most Kenyans are being just, uh, referred to India for cancer treatment. Could you explain that to us? I mean. Their life expectancy is supposed to be here, it's not supposed to be the other way around. My question is to the pro proposers. You seem to be very enthusiastic about getting a wife. How could you please explain to us how your wife your so beloved wife shall increase your life expectancy, shall increase your the way they how to give. Um <laughs> you about wars, wars in Sudan, or Sudan. You are not clear. You know, it's so ironical, but it's a fact. You know, there's a saying in the Swahili that says that brains are brought about by the hair. And it seems on the stage, when the ones who are so brainy. So, and first, Silence. to correct my opposers here, to correct my opposers here, we're not just Angela's as present. We are the three Saint Angela's school. And yes, he has that about Sorry, that. Please. He prays that um, he will not be able to get a wife from our school. My guy, we have standards. We do not believe in rich. So, first, Daniel's place, first to, to correct one of my opponents. You know, he pressed and brought about the things about NHIF, which I believe the NHIF program is only started through money, isn't it? Yes. It is. It is. We can set a program without any resources, and these resources only get them from the money. So, um, he also said that political stability is one of the problems. But political stability, as it states in Business Studies in Form 3 book, it comes in economic development and state of country. So please stop contradicting yourself. There was a question asked from the audience about the doctors and nurses. You see, doctors and nurses, yes, they're professionals, but they will not be strike one. Because they, they are not paid. They are not paid. And this is because our economic state in the country is low. Isn't it? Or are they expected to just do something for free? No, they are not. Um, there was one, uh, one of the audience asked for statistics about the birth rates and death rates. Let's go to India. You see, in WWE Imperial News, it's simply, clearly, without any fog news, tells us that 17 people, we have 17 births per thousand people. 
but we have 30 good deaths from the thousand people. Yes, the population is increasing, but also the life expectancy is going low, isn't it? I believe I'm being clear enough for you to say it. And we have a quote stated by Dodge last week. He simply says life expectancy will grow by leaps if pounds of green vegetables smell as good as bacon. And we don't want to go in any class war. We don't want. Or do you want to live a life in poverty? Do you expect to, do you expect to reach 80 years in poverty? Do you? No. That's just so unfactual. So please, 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 you need to accept it because it's nothing factual. And I'll finish by saying no one can predict the quantity of our lifespan, but we can affect our quality of our life exponentially. Thank you. Oh, it's Jumaria Osini from, I believe you know it now, the legendary St. Angela Kiren Gaps. I rest my case. My name is Alvin Karioki. I am a student in 44 Nyeri High School. I have studied for several years in my life, but I have been taught to speak and I have been taught to read. We have all not been taught to listen, but it is great to learn. Now, let's begin. To answer the question, what affects? We are giving you the facts, facts that are there, but it seems as if, if you are careful to listen, you will understand that issues like gender inequality, social living and cohesion, social, safe, social safety nets and policies in the society, that is what affects life expectancy. Not simply, we're not simply saying that a lady is what will increase life expectancy. And in fact, it's not all about our wives. It's not that I don't care. I simply care about my love life. It's not that I simply care about ladies from the legend of Kiriaini. It is simply because I care about them. I am normal. Gender inequality. Until one man took their hands. One man took the hands of women and brought feminism. Mortality rates were high. You were oppressed by men. Mortality was raising. They were dying. Because they died, and I do not want to remain a bachelor because they are dead, I care about their lives. We are noble men before everyone else. What does the innate NHIF have to do with the economy? It doesn't. It has nothing to do with the economy. How? Because it is singled out from the economy. Our deputy principal, Mr. Barnabas, is it your salary cut immediately when it comes in? Debit, credit. Does that have to do with the economy of Kenya? Whether the economy goes up or down, your salary remains. It is simply cut from a different cloth. It's that simple. And since you may want statistics, let's begin. Life expectancy is a multifaceted problem. You've been told the cube of life. You cannot look at it in a unidirectional way. You cannot look at it from one way. You should look at it from different ways to solve the whole problem. That's great math, actually. So, according to, according to WHO, there are social determinants to life expectancy in a country. Social determinants such as education level in the society. These social determinants increase or decrease life expectancy. And oh my God, I am also shocked. They didn't know. <laughs> Environmental factors that are simply out of your control. Can you control the climatic region in Sahara Desert? If you go there, the life expectancy is low. Can you control it in Antarctica? These are things that cannot be controlled. They are simply controlled by nature. Nature who mother nature can decide to be ugly and pretty another day. According to the Lancelot Commission on Environment, 9 million people die annually due to pollution. They, uh, they ask for stats, they give one. I give you many. I don't want you to flock with them. I simply want you to reason by yourself. Learn to listen. Thank you. You know... <laughs> Yapping around with lies. Because 
<laughs> you know, to answer your first question, an HIF program, it only started with resources. Or do you expect him to sit one day and say, you know what? Today let's get an HIF program and yet you have no money, you have no resources at all, you have no capital. Does that even make sense? No, it does not. Please stop contradicting yourselves. What don't you get to that point? My punchline, which brought me here, we don't end up in the clouds of wars. We want everyone to have every facility and a long life expectancy and with a stable state. And we can only achieve this exactly by that. Thank you and please. Don't let these people lie to you. They say they want you to work with them, but for us, they want you to work with us and live with us and agree to the fact that is brought out. Thank you and have yourselves a mesmerizing afternoon. For life expectancy. United Nations Education Scientific Cultural Organization state that a year in standing decreases the mortality rate by 7 to 9 percent yearly. We are not here to tell you that, econom that the economy determines life expectancy. We are here to tell you that it is a multifaceted problem that looks at different levels. Education, environment, social cohesion, gender inequality, several problems that come together will solve our Rubik's Cube. Blue, yellow, and so forth. All of you should understand it. The cube of life. We simply want that concept to be understood. We want gender equality. Actually, in a way, we agree with you, but you don't seem to want us to agree with you. We are choosing life because we want to find a means to increase life expectancy. Because in one way or another, I do agree with you. Long live the clan. Some comments, starting with the great girls. Great girls, Elizabeth, Kapunga. I, you did well, you tried to appeal to the emotions and to get the audience to flow with you, that is good. And uh, Maria, good rebuttal, that was good. However, I was, uh, we are not that impressed when you, when you are getting almost very personal. So, just talk to Talk to the audience. Leave the other debate about uh, having standards, and the others will make the judgment and announce the winner. Then on the other side of Yeri High, uh, that was still you did well. You did well. Bought a John, that was good. Though at times uh, I think you you talked a bit too fast. There are times when you need to pace down a bit and allow the audience to consume what you have said. Then we have Raphael Tari, you are a good debater, actually you are great. I like the fact that you are able to simplify your arguments by giving the audience examples they can relate with easily. That is good. And you also have the stage presence. Both sides, that was good. We enjoyed the debate. Let us wait for the results. I'll give my colleague the mic so that she can do the honors. Thank you. Uh, the results are like this. The great St. Angela's Green Girls has 75.6%, while the great Nyeri High has 79.2%.